So this is not the first time we've faced this situation during this series, but defeats tonight and the quest is over. So we have a two-legged tie versus Michelin in the Europa League playoff round to try and get into the last 16. We've been drawn against Danish side Michelin, which two episodes ago we faced in the league phase of the Europa League and we were 2-0 down at half-time, but we won 4-2. We're going to be away in the first leg tonight. We've not played a whole lot of football since the last episode where we were losing 3-0 to Bran Bergen from Norway and we absolutely wretched well since then we've had two league games we've hit four goals in both of them a 4-0 win against Istra a 4-1 win against bottom of the table Sibenyik but that was not as comfortable as it might appear from the scoreline we went a very early goal down in this game we managed to grab an equaliser but it wasn't until the second half that the game started to look more comfortable in fact we didn't find a third goal until the 70th minute and then we added a fourth in the 75th and the game became a lot more easy for us. But at 2-1 up, Sibenyuk had chances. They had an XG of 1.86. They had 16 shots. This is a team that look odds on to get relegated. So the warning signs continue that we are winning games. We are now top of the table, but we are anything but comfortable so far. We will show you that table. We are two points clear of Osiek and now 13 points clear of Hajduk. So it looks like we are going to finish in that top two. You'll see how far behind safety Sibenyik are. They've only won three games all season. They've lost 14. I know we beat them 4-1, but it was nervy for a while there. It looks like a two-horse race between ourselves and Osiek to seal the title. But we know that the title is not what we're really here for. It's all about European competition. So we are going to try and take on a Danish outfit who are currently top of the Danish Super League. We should probably have a look at how they've been doing over recent seasons. Doesn't look like they have won it since we fired up the quest, although they were runners up three years ago. Third place last season, which is why they are in the Europa League. I'd imagine they've got some players who are reasonably highly valued. Some of them, such as Magnus Schmidt, could be rated as highly as eighteen and a half million pounds. And in fact, I wish I hadn't clicked on him because he looks pretty good. But we've got some decent players of our own. The only trouble is our injury to goalkeeper Leopold Volstedt continues. He has still got a broken arm. He's at least a week to two weeks away from taking part in training. So it means that we are continuing to play Jasper Torkildsen in goal. And he is not quite of the standard that Volstedt is at. He did pull off a wonderful double save against Sibenyek, which has enamoured him to me a little bit more. I've even offered him a new contract to try and tie him down. And maybe that security might mean that he plays better for the next couple of weeks. We will see on that. Otherwise, I think we have our strongest lineup for tonight. If you consider our strongest lineup to be without all of the players that the board have sold, because I think there are at least three players the board have sold that would probably get in to this starting 11. But with Torkelson in goal, we're going to have what I now believe is our starting back four Komp and Bresnich, Beckham Avia, Serdan Sarchi, and I've decided because of the recent performances to Ricard Sanchez, we're going to remove him from the starting 11. And instead, we're going to start giving more priority to Timothy Pembele, who has been averaging above a seven in Europe and above a seven in the league. So I signed him thinking he might be as much a centre half as he was a right back. We're going to give him the wing back slot tonight. Parashik and Pavic are going to play in front of them. They are our default first choice midfield too. Vidovic, and the sulky Ishek are going to be on the wings. And in fact, if Ishek doesn't buck up his performances soon, I think he's going to fall out of the starting 11 before the end of the season. And then we're going to be playing the magic man, Tony, up front. He's got four goals and two assists in 10 league games. Yet to register a goal in Europe. We're going to see whether he can change that against Michelin in today's episode. And we have Anti Pilchic as well. Now, good old Anti Pilchards. She has now got six goals and five assists in 13 starts. 
which is starting to look a bit more of a respectable tally. Auntie scored two in her most recent game in that fixture against Sibenyik. So she's in good form, but we know that she can be a little bit wayward, old auntie, on occasions. So we'll see how she gets on tonight. I'm just going to check the old reports to see whether auntie has that inconsistency trait and, and doesn't. So hopefully should be able to turn on the charm against Michelin tonight. And we are underway. Reminder, this is going to be a two-legged affair. We're going to bring you both of the legs during this episode. It looks a little frosty out there in Denmark. The blue lines are marked. Our opponents, Michelin, have had the first and only shot of the game so far. We've made a relatively slow start and we face a corner to our opponents that they head just over the bar. We're a little nervous with Torkelson in goal. We would prefer Volstadt out there. Maybe there's an outside chance that Volstead might make the bench for the second leg, but I don't think we're going to see him back in action between the sticks unless we qualify for the last 16. We've got another corner to Michelin. We have not had a single highlight during the first 35 minutes of this game, and they've got space on the edge of the area, and Schmidt fires one over the bar. We're going to pause the game, and I don't think it's too early for a shout of demand more as we have done very little. Our opponents have not troubled us too much either, and we come back into the game towards the end of this first half. But we've got a highlight again, and we are not in possession of the football. This could be the last one before we reach half-time. We would dearly like to try and rob the ball and have an attacking highlight. Otherwise, we've got 45 minutes where we have not troubled their keeper even once. We've missed a tackle at right back. Pembele has hacked a man down. They've got to our byline. They've turned. They've sent the ball back. And they've had a very good effort on goal, which they will be disappointed was blocked. But the highlight continues. We're coming forward. Here is the ever disappointing Ishek. He gets to the byline himself. He swings in a cross. Vidovic does a header that he doesn't jump for. The ball sails a foot over his head. That typifies our first half. It was rubbish. Look at old Ishek out there pulling a 6.4 currently. That's pretty standard for him. The Magic Man and Auntie Pilchards both on 6.7s. I think on 60 minutes we might already make our first changes. And we are going to take Ishek off who has been disappointing once more. We might even make a little change up front later on if Auntie Pilchards and the Magic Man don't improve. We have got Stipislav Levaya, not exactly free scoring, I would say, but certainly a reasonable backup. I think we'll just make the one change for now and see whether just having a little bit more thrust down the right-hand side of the pitch might help us to create a chance. Before we get there, though, Torkelson has to perform heroics once more, clawing one off the goal line. Pavic brings it clear. Here's Pembele. And we've had just three shots during this entire game. We're going to pause once more. We'll try and encourage the players this time. On 70 minutes, I think we might make more two more changes and see if we can wrestle any control of this game. So two more subs enter the fray. One of them's a striker. We actually decide to go with Pizarro rather than Lavia. Not that that's made too much difference. And we enter 80 minutes and we're still creating precious little. We will now get Lavia on. They are not really suited to being a deep line forward. We'll play a brace of advanced forwards instead. And I think we're going to have to call on Renier over on the left as Vidovic is struggling towards the end of the game. Five shots, two on target. I don't remember us creating anything since half time, but Renier steals in. And I think it's two of the substitutes that have combined to give us a one goal advantage. It was Seschler over on the right. The player I'm thinking of installing as our first choice right sided midfielder because Ishek is so out of sorts. And he crosses to the other winger, Renier who steals in at the far post with a delicious little header. It gives us a one-goal advantage that we almost gift away as another Michelin corner troubles us. They've had 10 efforts this game, although only one of them has been on target. It's been a very even affair, 
and with 15 seconds to go before the allotted five minutes injury time are up, we need to try and keep them at bay. Unconventional goalkeeping by Torkelson twice as once he punches it when it's straight down the middle of the goal, the other time it cannons off his derriere and behind for a corner. No matter, we've given ourselves a one goal lead as we bring Micheland back to Croatia. So we're back and ready for that second leg. We've played a league game in the interim. It didn't go very well. In fact, we were really, really poor in this game. We lost 1-0 to Varoshtin. We didn't have an attacking highlight during the entire game. We did rotate the first team. We played all of our backup players to keep people fresh for the second leg against the Danes tonight. But our backup players were absolutely nullified by a Varos Din side who are not one of the top ones in the division. They find themselves in fifth. We're still top of the table, but our lead is cut to just one point against Osiek, and it is them that we are playing in our next league game. But we have got to focus on Europe for tonight. We have got a couple of injuries. Volster is still five days away from training. Sanchez has also picked up an injury that's going to keep him out for a couple of weeks. So we are without our first choice right back. And in the last game, Kompan Bresnic came on as a sub and picked up a knock. So he's going to sit out tonight as well. And we're going to give Leonardo Lello a start over at left back. So Pembele and Lello, not our first choice fullbacks at the start of the season, but they're going to be the players that are going to try and give us the width down the flanks tonight. We do have some good news, however, and that is that Isek, now that the transfer window has just closed, has decided that he would like to stay at the club as asked to being withdrawn from the transfer list. And I think that might mean that he's a little bit more positive and hopefully his performances will improve. We'll see whether that starts tonight. This could be the very last game of the quest. But let's hope that that is not the case and we race into an early lead in this game as we nearly concede within two minutes. They caused us trouble with their corners in the first leg and they've done so in the early stages of this. Pavic, though, has the ball for us. He gives it away and we've won it back again and given it away. And they're striding confidently towards our penalty area. Torkildson in what could be his last game, although I have to admit he has performed heroics in the last few games that he has played, but he's not our first choice. pembele has got the ball down the right. Vidovic was steaming in at the far post, but can't get near it. The magic man is there, though, six foot four, jumping reach of 17, heads it wide of the post. But at least we've registered an effort during this game. We will pause. We will shout. We will encourage the players he says, realising that they probably think we're 1-0 up on aggregate and that is the wrong thing to do. Never mind, it doesn't seem to have done any irreversible damage to their body language. And we come forward once more. Here is the magic man. Brings the ball into midfield. Parashek gives it to Serdar. Now the playmaker Pavic trades passes with his centre-back and midfield partner. And Auntie Pilchards, I think, may have gone too early. It's ruled out. Auntie Pilchards could have got us a two-goal advantage, but just went a shade too early. There wasn't even a VAR review. It was ruled out automatically. And now our opponents come forward again. Torkelson, I don't know why my heart is in my mouth every time they come forward. He's been very solid for us so far. Six shots for us, five for Michelin. We've got the slightly better XG and a goal that's been disallowed, but it is still a tie that is very much in the balance going into the second half. So all that talk about Petar Ishek improving now that they want to stay at the club, well, that was unfounded. They're at 6.4 at half time. They're already down to a 6.3. On 60 minutes, I think we end their game. Serdar tries to clear the ball. Vidovic gets a little header on it, but we are still being penned back by the Danes eager to try and get back into this tie. Lello mops up for us at the back and then promptly gives the ball away. Clearances on Football Manager are one of my absolute bugbears. Nobody seems to be able to get any distance on the ball whatsoever. And it costs us. I mean, what even is that? It's a, a chip into no man's land. And they storm forward and Rob Hulse gives it to Olsen. 
And now, on 52 minutes, the game is tied. So just when you thought Ishek couldn't get worse, he dropped down to a 6.2. We substituted him off and we have bought on Sechler, the Slovenian right winger in his place. Pilcic comes back and does a little bit of defensive work, hounding their midfielders, winning the ball. We give it away in the midfield once more and they are about to take the lead in this tie, I fear. Of course not. It's Torkelson again. Is he becoming our first choice goalkeeper? I'm not entirely sure. Nine shots each, four on target each. We start with the ball, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything because we've been very wasteful in possession. We work it to the magic man. He is anything but magic with that finish. But Sechler looked pretty lively with a little Rabona pass there. That was nice. We're on 68 minutes. We're going to have a look at who might need to come off. Lello absolutely looks like they are heading up that list. And Auntie Pilchards isn't far behind. So this is all getting a little nervy now. It's 1-0 on the night. It's 1-1 on aggregate. We've not looked good this game apart from the great man in goal who claims another aerial ball, drops it to his own feet, backs himself with a Exocet missile of a pass that now comes to Pizarro, the substitute that we've just bought on for Auntie Pilchards. We've moved Vidovic from the left wing up front as we substituted the magic man. Renier has come on over on the left and they've linked up. Pizarro wins a header. Vidovic feeds them the ball and Pizarro strikes it past the goalkeeper and we are now 2-1 up on aggregate, tied on the night. So we've entered the final few moments of the game. We've brought our last substitute onto the pitch and still the Danes come pressing. They've got Schmidt over a free kick. How on earth their players were completely unmarked? I have no idea. Torkelson managed to get one of those huge ankles onto the ball. Vidovic heads the ball clear. Nieto goes off in chase. I think as soon as this highlight is played out, we are going to start time wasting because this. He's getting very nervous. The ball is back with the great man. He sends another one of those searching passes out. And the same two players combine. It's Pizarro, Davidovic, and now Sechler. And the highlight continues as we give it back to Pavic and Vincic, only just on the field. And Sechler has a chance to seal the tie. And he misses. The time wasting is now on. We are into stoppage time. Two minutes, three minutes played. We're going to put the full time wasting on now. And hopefully the referee is going to put us out of our misery, send us out into the knockout rounds, I believe for the first time in about seven seasons of European football. We finally made the promised land of the last 16 of a European competition. I think to be respectable, we need to go two rounds further. But I think a lot of that will depend on who we draw next. And welcome to the draw. So let's see who we have. Of course, if you need a host for a European draw, Edin Dzeko is the obvious candidate. Let's see what he presides over. Wolfsburg are first out. They've got Valencia. I don't mind missing either of those teams. Although, looking at who's left, most of them are pretty tough games. We've got Salzburg. I'd like to avoid them if we could. And we have, and we've got Norseland, who were one of the top teams in qualifying. Feyenoord is another game I would not be hugely keen on. They've been tied against young boys last year's finalists. Stuttgart would be very tough opponents. They have got French outfit Rangers. Bode Glimt are next. I'm tempted to say that would be a preferable draw, but we've been terrible against Norwegian teams and have lost to them in both of the last two years of European competition. They got Levski Sofia from Bulgaria. I would have liked to have played them. Next, we've got Lille. That would be a very tough game, although I see Newcastle are looming on the horizon. We do not want to be drawn against them. Sporting club from Portugal. Get Lille. Now, it's us. Aston Villa are there. Newcastle are there. Please don't be one of those two clubs. And of course, it's Aston Villa. The FM gods have conspired to give us not just a Premier League club, but the rivals of the team that I support in real life. And we could have got Servette from Switzerland instead. They get tied against Newcastle, and I would imagine it's going to be a 
a very difficult proposition for us to qualify for those quarterfinals. But at least we know what game we're coming back for next.